in the last lecture we have studied about the one dimensional steady state conduction with heat generation problem now in this lecture will be dealing with a new problem and that problem is heat transfer through the extended surfaces so in this particular lecture we will be deriving the expression for the basic on basic fins the heat transfer through the basic uh, fins so i will be dealing with some introductory remarks then relevance of the fins then what are the different configurations of the fins which are used in practice few of them and the applications and then finally we will try to find out what is the general equation for the fins governing equation for the fins so myself nitin l berud working as a associate professor in sandeep institute of engineering and management extended surface here it is defined as a solid which experiences energy transfer by conduction within its boundaries as well as energy transfer by convection between its boundaries and surrounding so let us take an example so this is a suppose a metal rod this is connected to a surface let us call the surface as a base surface and this rod which is extended from the base surface and it is exposed to some fluid here in this case it is say air the fluid is having a temperature of t infinity and the heat transfer coefficient is h so in this situation there are two possibilities the base surface if it is at higher temperature compared to the fluid there would be conduction from the base surface into the fin material at the same time the heat is going to get convected from the outer surface of the fins means there are two things are happening energy transfer by conduction within the boundaries means within the boundaries within the boundaries the mechanism of heat transfer from the base surface to this extended surface is by conduction and the mechanism of heat transfer by convection between the boundaries and the surrounding so in between these boundaries and the surrounding the mode of heat transfer is conduction sorry convection so if such type of situation is there then that particular surface can be called as a extended surface now in a extended surface if you just give the number names to the different uh, parts of that particular diagram as i already told you that the surface at which the fin is mounted or the extended surface is mounted is called as a fin base <coughs> the other end of the fin is called as fin tip and there is heat transfer by conduction at the base and heat transfer by convection from the outer surface and the fin temperature ts is going to get change along the length so if you just plot the change in the temperature of the fin along the length you will get that the temperature of the fin is going to get reduced along the length the heat is getting transferred by conduction at the base and the same heat is getting convected from the fin surface so it implies that when if you move from the base towards the tip of the fin the temperature of the fin surface is supposed to reduce now what type of reduction is there that we have to find out at the same time the ambient temperature from the fin base to the fin tip can be assumed to remain constant because if any variation is there in the ambient temperature that is also negligibly small so can be ignored in practice so this is how the thermodynamic sorry heat transfer problem of the fin can be uh, shown the temperature gradient in x direction shows that heat transfer by conduction internally at same time there is energy transfer by convection from the surface so this is the variation in the temperature which indicates that there is conduction at the surface at the base and convection from the outer surface an extended surface which is used specifically to enhance the heat transfer rate the intention is to increase the rate of heat transfer between the solid and the adjoining fluid 
can be called as a fin. A surface which is specifically meant for increasing the rate of heat transfer is called as fin. Now let us consider uh, some important parameters so that we can <coughs> find out what is the relevance of the fins. Consider a plane wall of figure in the last figure we already seen that the temperature of the surface is Ts that is the base temperature I can say. The fluid temperature is T infinity. The rate of heat transfer is given by Newton's law of cooling. In this situation you can say that Q convection from the outer surface is equal to Hs h a into t s minus t infinity now if suppose there is no fin fin is not there then the temperature of the surface is t s the fluid temperature is t infinity surface area is say a now our aim is to increase the rate of heat transfer let us call this as equation as 3.1 where a is the heat transfer area and h is the heat transfer convection coefficient we already know this now if t s is fixed there are two ways in which the heat transfer may be increased. If this fixed temperature is there, T infinity, sorry, Ts is fixed, then there are two ways by which the heat transfer may be increased. The convection coefficient could be increased, increase in the value of heat transfer coefficient, and that can be achieved by increasing the fluid velocity, the velocity of the fluid which is uh, moving past the surface can be increased and the temperature of the fluid could be reduced. The cooling fluid, whatever is there, the T infinity can be reduced. So there are two options. H can be increased or T infinity can be reduced. So that this Ts minus T infinity is going to be larger and automatically it will result into higher rate of heat transfer. Increasing H to the maximum possible value is either insufficient to obtain the desired heat transfer rate or associated cost like the power of the blower or the pump which is required for increasing the velocity are probably very high. H can be increased. There is no uh, can say big thing in increasing the value of H but it is not coming free of cost because if you want to increase the value of H we have to increase the velocity of the fluid and that can be achieved by using a pump or blower or a fan and all these devices need some power. So there is cost associated with the power consumed by these devices. And that's why many times it is the whatever the associated cost is there, it is so high that increase in H, whatever we are achieving and because of that subsequent increase in the rate of heat transfer, what we are going to achieve may not be sufficient. So this option is not so good. Sometimes it is useful even uh, in such case where the heat transfer coefficient is too low and if you can increase it with some uh, maybe some uh, some minor changes in the system if you can increase it for example suppose uh, let us take a refrigerator example uh, refrigerator the uh, refrigerator coil the backside condenser coil if it is very close to the wind uh, wall then automatically the air air movement gets blocked because the closeness to the wall and that's the re reduction in the heat transfer coefficient. But if you just move it slightly away, maybe four to six inch away from the wall, automatically there is more scope for the air to move. And under natural convection also, there is slight increase in the value of heat transfer coefficient, which is good for us. So without just without any investment, we can achieve this H increase in H sometimes. But this is not always possible. And whatever is value of H may not be sufficient many in many real life applications, many industrial applications. So this option is not so good. Another option is the second option was to reduce the T infinity. Uh, of course, this is the fluid temperature, the atmospheric temperature, the ambient temperature, which is reduction in this fluid is not in our control many times, rather uh, always. Because it is dependent on the environment temperature. We cannot change the temperature of the environment. Of course, uh, during winter, automatically the temperature is less. So we may get a higher rates of heat transfer during summer as the value of the fluid temperature is higher. We not get that much power, that much rate of heat transfer. So that is naturally possible, but we cannot do it uh, manually. If you want to do it manually, we need to have some refrigeration system. And of course, the cost associated with the refrigeration system and the running cost of refrigeration system is quite high. So that is also not practicable.
So what is the third option? Is there any third option? Yes. So fortunately, there is a third option and that is heat transfer rate can be increased by increasing the surface area by providing the pins. So here, see, if you see the proper uh, words I use, maybe, it is not always. Just by providing the pin, not always ensures that the rate of heat transfer is going to get increased. We'll see this when we'll complete our analysis with the help of the mathematical equation. We can prove that the heat transfer may not be assured. It's kind of, you cannot say that just I'm adding the pin and automatically I'm going to get the increase in the rate of heat transfer. In some, some cases, the rate of heat transfer may get increased. In some cases, it may not. So what are those cases and how to identify them that we are going to see in the subsequent lectures. So heat transfer rate may be increased by increasing the surface area and that is what is we call providing the fins. So we can provide the fins. We can uh, we may get the increase in the rate of heat transfer. If you pro, uh, choose the fin configuration properly, if you choose the fin dimensions properly, if you design the fin properly, Automatically, we can ensure that there is increase in the rate of heat transfer. Ideally, the fin material should have a large value of thermal conductivity to minimize the temperature variation from its base to its tip. So you can recall the last sketch in which the temperature variation uh, in the fin was shown and that temperature variation was because of the conduction through the material. If the material is having very high thermal conductivity, automatically the variation in the temperature is going to be minimum. And of course, the uh, fin is going to be more effective, more efficient. In the limit of infinite thermal conductivity, if the material is having infinite thermal conductivity, the entire fin would be at a temperature of the base surface. There is no resistance for the heat to flow by conduction. So entire fin will be at the same temperature Ts, thereby providing maximum possible heat transfer enhancement. But of course, this is the ideal case. We cannot have a material having infinite thermal conductivity. But this is the ideal case. Under this ideal situation, we can say this is the ideal pin where the infinite thermal conductivity material is being used. And that's why the temperature of the pin at entire surface is equal to the surface temperature or the base temperature. And we are getting the maximum rate of heat transfer. Now, what are the applications of the fins? We have seen that why the fins are used. The fins are used basically for increasing the rate of heat transfer by increasing the area. <coughs> now, what are the applications? There are several applications. Of course, there are many applications where fins are being used. I'm just listing out few of them. The arrangement of cooling engine heads on motorcycle or lawnmowers or in cars. Sometimes, of course, car in cars mostly we are using the uh, what you call water cooling system, but in radiators of the car, we are using the air cooled. So fins are available in the radiators. So cooling engine heads outside, uh, you might have noticed that uh, on the two wheeler motorcycles, the engines are outside the outside part of the engine cylinder is covered with uh, it is uh, provided with the fins from the under entire circumference. Okay. And and in case of lawnmowers also means for air cooled engine I can say then for cooling electric power transformers you might have noticed this also uh, if you see the transformer on the roads street uh, uh, streets you might uh, maybe find that on the both the sides there are some extended surfaces provided in order to increase the heat transfer rate to cool the oil specifically and the subsequently uh, because of the cooling of oil the coils are going to get cooled the tubes which attach with attached fins used to promote the detection between air and working fluid on the air conditioner as I already told you in refrigeration air conditioning system. So almost all the heat exchangers needs the fin basically. So these are some of the applications of the fins and these are the some basic configuration of the fins. The fins can be much much complicated in shape and sizes as compared to what I have shown. I am showing you some basic configuration. For example, the first one the A is a straight fin with uniform cross section. You can see it is a straight fin and the cross section area is constant. Second one is straight fin with non-uniform cross section. Here the triangular cross section is there. Third one is annular fin. It is provided on the entire circumference like the cylinder of the IC engine. So this type of fin is called as annular fin. And the last one which is of our interest is called as pin fin. 
it is appearing like a pin a spine and that's why it is called as a pin pin so whatever analysis we are going to do we are not going to concern about other complex uh, conditions we will concentrate our attention on the simplest possible type of pin and that is a pin pin so in our syllabus we are going to talk only about the pin pins of course uh, that is basic analysis can be extended for any type of pin so it's not like that key for uh, different configurations we are going to have different types of analysis no whatever basic analysis we are going to learn that is that analysis is equally applicable to other forms of the pins so that's that's not a point of concern so if you are having comfort with all these analysis which we are going to do with this pin pin you can equally use that applic uh, analysis with the help of some charts and some additional things in for other pins also so that's not a point of concern let us uh, talk about how we are selecting the configuration when we are selecting a configuration what type of pin is to be selected depends on how much space is available how much weight of the pin can be maximum weight of the pin can be accommodated in that system manufacturing is whether we are having the facilities to manufacture that complex shapes and uh, thickness of the pins then of course cost considerations and extent to which the pin reduce the surface convection coefficient very uh, precisely it is said that extent to which the pins reduce the surface convection coefficient reduce you may ask me sir how it is reducing so when uh, suppose a base base surface is there we are attaching the pin suppose there are multiple pins attached to a single surface then automatically the uh, uh, surface is getting block and when uh, suppose air is moving past this surface so air is uh, whatever that movement of air is there that is blocked by the presence of the fins and because of that there is automatically some reduction in the surface convection coefficient of course it depends on the type of the pin the you can say density of the fins the shape of the pins and all these things so extent to which the fin reduces the surface heat transfer coefficient now you may ask me why it is important if you are providing the fins we are getting the rate of heat transfer increase then why we are worrying about the reduction in the surface heat transfer coefficient see if you see it uh, suppose there is a surface like this and if you are providing the fins there is much more area which is available which is unfinned and from this unfinned surface also the area on which the fins are not provided there is large area and if you uh, that uh, unfinned area is also exposed to some fluid okay and some heat is lost because from that fluid, uh, that unfinned area also so if there is reduction in the surface convection coefficient particularly for this unfinned area automatically it will reduce the heat transfer rate from the unfinned area means at one end we are providing the pins in order to increase the rate of heat transfer at the other end because of the presence of the pin there is reduction in the surface coefficient surface, con surface con convection coefficient and we are getting reduction in the heat transfer coefficient or heat transfer rate from the unfinned area totally increases there because of the pin and decreases there because of the fins and some up it may happen sometimes that there is no achievement so that that care we have to take and that's why it is important to extend to which the pin reduces the surface surface his transfer coefficient and increase in the pressure drop associated with the flow over the fins this is also very very important once again i am telling you if there is there are multiple fins provided on the surface multiple fins fined surface so when movement of uh, fluid is there maybe air or liquid any anything so there is more pressure drop because of the presence of the extended surfaces and in order to overcome this pressure drop we need more power so power requirement for the fluid flow is going to be enhanced when we are using the fins so if the pressure drop is much higher then you may not justify the cost of the fins sometimes the operating cost which is required to uh, 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 operate the system with fins is so high that if you are uh, you have manufactured the fins with lesser cost also the there is sudden increase in the operating cost of the system which may not be justified which may not be justified and that's why this all these parameters are to be considered okay now we'll uh, concentrate on the general analysis we are going to develop a generalized conduction equation for the pins one more generalized equation you may recall that we already developed a three dimensional conduction equation for cartesian coordinate system 
then spherical coordinate system then cylindrical coordinate system then why there is a need of additional uh, one more general conduction equation in this case what is whether that general conduction equation which was used is not applicable here the answer is no the reason is in that general conduction equation we have consider only conduction here we have to consider the conduction along with the convection process so simultaneously there is conduction and convection so we cannot get this results satisfied with that equation which was mean for only for conduction process so the applications are different now we have to go for some additional things into this so let us consider extended surface once again i am showing you a plane with a non uniform cross section area and it is exposed to some fluid say air at temperature t infinity with its transfer coefficient h and i have taken a small strip on the length of the surface of the pin at distance x and the strip is having a small dimension say dx so there is heat transfer by conduction in to the element at distance x then there is heat transfer by conduction out from the element say qx plus dx and there is at the same time there is some heat is lost by convection from the strip so if you just simply apply, uh, apply the energy balance qx is coming in and these two qx plus q uh, sorry qx plus dx and dq convection are going out so energy coming in is equal to energy going out so qx is equal to qx plus dx plus dq convection so that is our energy balance with which we have to work uh, for deriving the expression we are going to have some assumptions let us list them one by one it is going to be one dimensional steady state conduction then thermal conductivity of the fin material is assumed to be constant and isotropic material radiation from the surface is assumed to be negligible or whatever radiation is there that has to be converted into convection coefficient and this h will represent both radiation as well as convection and h is to be assumed to be uniform over the surface right from the base to the tip there is no change in the value of heat transfer coefficient at a if you uh, just observe it you'll find that as the temperature of the fin is different at different locations there is different temperature difference across the fin length means along the sorry not across along the fin length means the surface temperature of the fin that is t and t infinity the reduction is there continuously and because of that heat transfer coefficient may be different at different locations but we are going to assume it as a uniform heat transfer coefficient over the entire surface all these assumptions are realistic and possible in the practice so if you apply the conservation of energy or we are told you about the conservation of energy to the differential element we obtain this qx is equal to qx plus dx plus dq convection now you have to write down the equations for qx qx plus dx and dq convection and then we'll put it in this equation to get the final form of the equation so let us call it as 3.2 now for a fluorous law of conduction you can write down qx is equal to minus k into area of cross section which is not constant in this case mind it into dt upon dx why i am saying dt not del because temperature is function of x only that we have already assumed there it is steady and one dimensional so we can directly take the dt and dx <laughs> so qx is known to us now where area c is the cross section area and which may vary with respect to x let us call this equation as 3.3 and conduction rate at x plus dx may be expressed as you may recall once again the generalized conduction equation in that case we have written this qx plus dx in this fashion that is qx plus dx is qx plus the change in value of qx in the distance dx this is according to taylor series principle so once again we are writing qx plus dx is equal to qx plus change in qx that is d upon dx of qx into dx dx is the distance in between uh, x and x plus dx so that's why it is multiplied by dx so in that distance what is the change and that change already written in this fashion now uh, it follows that qx plus dx is equal to if you put uh, qx here it will be minus k ac into dt upon dx minus k in bracket d upon dx ac is taken inside why because it is function of 
x so that's why it is inside into dt upon dx into x so this is our equation number 3.5 now we can write down the convection as using the newton's law of cooling that is h into das into t minus t infinity now here h is the heat transfer equation das is the surface area of differential element and surface area of the differential element can be calculated simply geometry if you see the geometry it is perimeter into the length if you know the perimeter of the fin and multiplied by the length of this portion that is tx that element area is having length dx so if the perimeter into dx that will give you value of ds of course if the area is if the uh, what you call diameter is constant but in this case it is non uniform so we have we cannot write down in that uh, in this case as simply as das this is changing so uh, substituting the foregoing equations into energy balance equation 3.2 if you put all these three equations uh, qx qx plus dx and q convection into that equation you will get this cancelling all the terms which are getting cancelled actually qx is going to get cancelled because it is present in x plus dx also and qx also and if you put it in this fashion you will get this and dividing by dx it is substituted and divided by dx so we got this now dx is in the denominator here is no dx because it is cancelled and it's equal to zero now this and if you expand it expand means multiplication if you take the multiplication of the differentiation form and if you divide it by area cross section you'll get this d squared upon dx square plus 1 upon ac dac upon dx dt upon dx minus 1 upon ac into h upon k das upon dx into t minus t infinity is equal to 0 where das element of the surface area that is the surface area and dac is the element of the cross section area which so surface area as well as cross section area both are function of x because the changes in the dimension the area of cross section is not constant with respect to length so this is what is the required equation this results provide a general form of energy equation for the one dimensional condition in the extended surface so this is what which what we are we are looking for this is the general conduction equation for the fins now of course in the next step is would be to find out the solution for this so let us do it now let us uh, uh, make it more simple uh, for a fin with uniform cross sectional area. So, solve the equation 3.8. We take the simplest case of straight rectangular fin or pin fins of uniform cross section area. Area of cross section is not changing with respect to x. Simply, it means that area of surface is also not changing with the value of x. Of course, it is going to increase linearly but that the that is not dependent on the uh, uh, edge direction anymore it is simply the perimeter into that length particular length up to which we are finding out the surface area that can be easily calculated so if we consider a pin fin with rectangular cross uh, rectangular or pin fins uh, with some uniform cross sections then the equation can be area is constant and that can be calculated as perimeter into length sorry area of cross section is constant and that can be calculated by using the uh, formula for that uh, cross section maybe uh, suppose if it is a circular cross section it will be pi by 4 d square like that and as is the surface area measured from the base to x and p is the fin of perimeter so accordingly with this substitution that is das upon dx is equal to perimeter and dac upon dx that is the area of cross section with respect to x there is no change in that and if you put all these values in this equation we'll get a simplified form of that equation 3.8 and that is d square t upon dx square minus hp upon kc into t minus t infinity is equal to 0 let us call it as t 3.9 we can more <coughs> make it more simple and make it convert it into a standard form by substituting uh, with a transformation of the dependent variable by defining a term called as theta 
and it is called as excess temperature and if you define this theta that is excess temperature in this fashion that is temperature theta is equal to temperature of the fin at any point x minus temperature of fluid so if you take this ts that is surface temperature minus fluid temperature as theta and if you substitute here so d square theta or d square t upon dx square will become d square theta upon dx square if you just take the second uh, second order differentiation of this term theta it will be d square theta upon dx square and this t minus t infinity will become theta so the equation will be modified as d square theta upon dx square minus m square theta is equal to zero where m it is equal to h sorry m square is equal to hp upon kac so i just replace this term hp upon kac by uh, another term called as m square and that was hp upon k into ac and this is our equation which we are going to find out the solution for okay this is the uniform uh, this is for fin with uniform cross sectional area d square theta upon d square minus m square theta is equal to zero where m square is equal to hp upon kac so we use this equation for finding out the solution now <coughs> Equation 3.11 is a linear homogeneous second order differential equation with constant coefficients and its general solution is in this fashion. So, I already told you that uh, whatever equation 3.11 we are getting that is we are getting in a standard form and it's a standard homogeneous differential equation. If you solve it, we will get this solution that is theta. Now, I am not saying temperature because we have replaced temperature by theta. So theta, that is the temperature difference, is equal to C1 e to the power x mx plus C2 e to the power minus mx. So this is the solution. Once again, we got two random constants and we have to find out the values of these two random constants. To evaluate the values of constants C1 and C2 of equation, it is necessary to specify the boundary conditions. Of course, two constant means two boundary conditions. One such condition may be specified in terms of the temperature at the base which is fixed. The best temperature of the surface to which the fin is connected is always fixed. So at x is equal to 0, we got a fixed temperature and that can be written as theta at x is equal to 0 is always equal to the best temperature minus fluid temperature and let us call it as theta b. Let us call it as theta b. So we can got the first condition, uh, first boundary condition which is applicable to any type of fin is at theta is theta sorry at x is equal to 0 is equal to theta b. Theta at x is equal to 0 is equal to theta b. So this is our first equation. Now the second condition specified at the fin tip, maybe x is equal to L and maybe corresponding to different types of type of fins. Let us see one by one. We may have adiabatic condition at the fin tip. We may assume that the fin tip is insulated or we can have a fin with infinite length that is very very long fin we can have consider the convection heat transfer from the fin tip which was ignored in the first case or we can have prescribed temperature maintained at the fin tip like the base we can have a fin tip temperature also known to us so there are four possibilities four general possibilities that the fin can be assumed to be a insulated fin tip fin with very long length or infinite length can be taken into consideration. Convection from the fin tip is not ignored like the first case. It may be considered and we can say convection from the heat transfer from the fin tip is considered and if you know the temperature of the fin tip and fin base both. So you can use these four uh, conditions as the second condition one by one and we can develop the different equations. As per the requirement of the syllabus and of course uh, as per general uh, convention, normally these two conditions are preferred. The first one is adiabatic condition at the fin tip, that is insulated fin tip, and second one is infinite fin. Almost all the problems in the fins and the extended surface can be solved by using this. In fact, this convection heat transfer from the fin tip, the solution can be obtained just by using a simple modification in the solution of insulated fin tip. And that modification is called as the use of corrected length. We'll see it in the next lecture. And prescribed temperature maintained at the height uh, fin tip. Of course, the solution is complicated. <coughs> and we'll see the 
final forms also but these two are not the part of our syllabus our uh, syllabus is limited to adiabatic condition definitive and infinite fin that is very very long fin so in the next lecture onwards we are going to in the sorry in the next lecture we will be talking about first the solution of the fin for adiabatic condition and then for the infinite fin so we'll try to find out the equations for the fins so in this lecture we have talked about uh, discuss about the fins and the relevance of the fins different configurations and the application of the fins and we have derived finally the general equation for the fins next lecture i'll be finding out the solution for both the problems i discuss and then we'll see in the next to next lecture some performance parameters for the fins okay thank you thank you very much